Hello, everyone. Uh, today we are going to be talking about how to add media layers for georeferencing. Maybe you got an old map or a utilities diagram for georeferencing any of those types of files on to an ArcGIS Online map. I'm going to be following along this new blog. This came out in February of 2023, so new at the time of me recording this video um, on how to add this type of media. The big thing that we're going to be doing is this is a simple georeference. If you want to do more detailed georeferencing, you're going to want to use um, a more in-depth program such as ArcGIS Pro or ArcMap. And there's some notes about the different files that you can bring in. We're going to be bringing in what's called a media layer, and they can be a JPEG or PNG, and they're limited to 10 megabytes in size. So what that tells me starting off is whatever file I want to bring in has to be a JPEG or a PNG. In today's demo, I'm going to be working on Bledsoe Creek State Park. And what I'm trying to do is get some utilities uh, maps that we have onto the state park map online so that I can digitize this map and add some actual shape files and points to it. So what I have here in my folder is a couple of different images that were sent over. If I look at the file types, we have that they're all JPEGs. You'll also notice that I had a map of the state park that's going to be helpful for kind of grounding where I am. When it started out, this map I had was a PDF. So if you need any of our state park maps, you can get them online um, or through the park website and download those uh, usually as a JPEG. Um, but if not, you can use something like Adobe Acrobat and convert the file. So this is a PDF and I can convert that to a JPEG or a PNG. Once I have that, I'll, I'll be able to start working in the map. Um, as I said before, these are all JPEGs, so I'll be able to upload those and use those. So what I want to do is I'm going to start by going to ArcGIS Online. Um, you'll sign in with your account. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to Map. Now I'm creating a new map. One thing you want to check out uh, right off the bat is can you save your map? So go on down here to where the little folder icon is and see if you can save it. If you cannot save it, that means you don't have the right license type. So if you don't um, contact the GIS team and we'll make sure you have the right type, you might have been assigned a mobile worker license originally, but you needed a creator type, which allows you to edit and create files online. Um, that's just an upgrade and we, we kind of reserve those for people who are doing this more in depth work, just like you who are watching this video today. So uh, if you're used to using ArcGIS online in these maps, you might uh, be comfortable with adding layers uh, and browsing through your content and pulling them in from different places. But we're doing something new today. We're going to add a media layer. So I go to layers on the side, add media layer. And from here, I can just drag and drop or look for it on my device. So I'm going to pull in the Bledsoe Creek campground map. As it does that, it takes a second to load it. And we're going to be doing some really simple georeferencing. Um, if you've used ArcGIS Pro or other software before, you might be setting control points and stuff. Today, we're really just shrinking, resizing, and reshaping this to, uh, to fit into the right window. Uh, since I, I want to make this smaller, I'm going to hold down Shift to shrink this down. Um, that's going to do it scaled so that I don't uh, mess anything up. If I didn't, um, you know, you could get something wonky like that. I hit Control Z to get it back to where it was. So I'm going to scale it down really, really small. And then I'm going to use a mouse to scroll in, or you could double click. And we're going to try and get this little map to fit right in Tennessee um, at Bledsoe Creek. So it helps to know where you want to stick this map uh, and to know your area. So we're going to zoom in to Bledsoe Creek on Old Hickory Lake. It's just starting to show up here, right up here. So I'm going to get that here and zoom into that area. And this is just the campground map, not the whole park map, because the utility section I'm working on only has a small bit uh, within the campground. And actually, that wasn't too bad. But as you can see, there's some transparency. I'm going to be trying to line up the campground map that Leah drew with the base map here. So I think I need to make it a bit smaller. And I can use the transparency dials at the bottom to help out with this. You'll notice too that we still have our base map gallery, so you could use imagery if that's more helpful for you. But for me right now, this is actually a nice simplified view. So as I drag this around, let's see. 
I can get a little bit closer. I'm trying to line up those circles. I think I need to be a bit smaller. Get the, the bend in the road up there looking good. And this has got to be a bit smaller here. Bring it on there. We're getting really close here. And I think that's looking pretty good to me. I'll double check on the imagery. A little bit smaller. I'm gonna go back to the base map that I had before. I'll use OpenStreetMap to try something different. There we go. That looks really similar there. Every different base map might have a different source, so it's always good to try out some different things. I'll go a little bit smaller. All right, I like the look of that. So I'm going to hit Update and Close. And just like that, I have my base map, my uh, my georeferenced media image in here. At any time, I can go back and reshape and resize that. But let's see what that looks like. So with, I put some transparency in there. It kind of fades right into the right spot. So beautiful. That's really cool. Now you have that there. And what I'll do is I'll save this map. The Bledsoe Utilities demo. And now I want to bring in kind of a more complex map. So in my utilities, I had a, a drawing. Um, and it was it looks like the maintenance area, some of the campground loop, and you can actually see the little pieces of the campground loop. So this is an actual, um, I think, a, a survey or a CAD file that was sent over to me that the park office scanned. They had it in a large blueprint, and they were scanning in different sections. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to add a media file, drag and drop, and let this load up. What's really nice is because I already placed that first media file, it's kind of zoomed into Bledsoe Creek to begin with. So I don't have to do that whole long zooming in. And now I got what I'm trying to do is line up the curve in this road and some other features. I think in this case it's going to be really helpful to do um, uh, some imagery hybrid because it has roads on there drawn out. I can see the circles and we have some imagery. So I got to shrink this down a good amount to get it to line up right. And I don't I want the transparency to be a little bit less here because it's that white background, so it will make it easier for me to see. Still pretty big. Let's see what else we can do. Starting to get there, uh, getting closer. All right, for today's sake, I'm going to keep it just like this. And I'm going to hit update and close. And look at that. Now I've got another image geo reference right to here. And actually, it does seem to line up pretty well. If you look at the, the curves here and all that, it's not the end of the world. I mean, this is going to get us uh, closer than we've ever been before. So I can look at that. I can look at it with imagery behind. So if I want to change the base map again, I can go over to base maps and pull up any of the common base maps that we have. But what if I want something a little bit more complex? Um, this imagery is great, but it's not not the best. I could also add one from add some imagery from a URL if you had some. An example of this might be uh, Vexel imagery that we have from the state of Tennessee. So if you want that, stay tuned for another video where we talk about imagery options. So in this case, I'm going to copy and paste this imagery server in here just so I have it. And I'll be able to select uh, one of the years that I'm interested in. I'm going to use the most recent 2023. And we'll see that it's a leaf off, so it's uh, a little bit easier to see. And uh, it looks really nice here. All right, so the water system, that's what I'm here to do today anyways. So I'm going to turn this off and just look at the water system. 
so what how do i actually create some data or something of interest around this well we created a couple utilities layers that might be uh, beneficial so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do browse layers and i want to look for stuff that my organization has published if i type in utilities statewide park utilities comes up and i can add this layer Looks like I got, I got the wrong one at first, but let's try statewide park utilities. And now I see that here. Um, this layer is actually what they call a feature data set, so it has a bunch of different layers inside of it. And so really all I want to care about today is um, water related things. So I'm going to look at potable water pressure lines or so maybe do some supply valves. So let's try that. Um, and what I want to do is I want to actually create some points here. So I could be adding sketches, but those are kind of temporary, not really data related. So instead I want to do edit and create features. When I start creating features, I can use any of these points, but I'm going to use this nice blue dot that represents potable water points. And as I zoom in, I actually have these. So I could look for a great a supply valve. So Maybe this is not a correct, quite correct thing, but I'm just showing you the general idea. So the point type here is a valve. And I can say what the supplier is if I knew it, the model, the storage capacity, and where how did I get this? I actually um, got this from the design plan. So there's my drop down there. Um, the last repair date, notes, if I had a picture on hand, I could add that there. And now it's, uh, it's there permanently. We can add some more. We could draw, let's do some water lines. So we know it feeds from here to here. So I can digitize this from point to point and start building out my water lines. So as we develop our utilities layer in more depth, we're going to add more options about what this line can be. Double click to finish. The line type is a water service. Um, it is existing. It's not abandoned or removed. This might, if you're ever pulling up um, old pipeline or you see some listed, lifted, left over in there, it might be a good place to do that. Um, this was HDPE plastic. Uh, and I could say that it was a four inch diameter source. And again, I got this from the design plan. And I can add attachments, create and save. And now if I go back up, I can minimize this and turn this off and look at that. I've started to digitize from a design plan my entire system. And this will show up later on if I go to the Smart Parks data viewer. I might want to hit save real quick, make sure all those edits change. And if I go on and zoom into Bledsoe Creek State Park and turn on those types of utilities, they'll be part of the statewide data set on utilities. So that's just an example of how you could use media layers to your advantage. Maybe you have some historic uh, documents, um, old historic maps that you could pull in. Um, that would be another thing that you could use it for. So if we head on over to Bledsoe Creek, do we have any of those utilities showing up yet? Not quite. We've got to make sure we have that layer turned on. Potable water point, and there's my potable water point. And my force pressure line shows right up all part of the statewide data set i can even see it um, if i open up the table on the bottom here and you can see all the different ones that have been added to our system so far so thanks for following along if you guys need uh, some more information on this do a little search or i'll put this in the the video as well announcing media layers for adding images to web maps so how to get jpegs and pngs into your map just like this all right, thank you very much and we'll catch you next time.